Testing, 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 going test. Hello there. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today's a bit of a special episode as we're looking around an absolute classic, TM190. But this TM's an absolute gem as it's only done 3,200 hours and it's been on the farm since new. The TM190 then, 190 horsepower but can boost to 240 horsepower. And that's proper boost, that is back then. Quick look at the front, New Holland factory fitted front linkage. We have a bit of an afterthought though, cowboy farmer. We have a spool fitted to the front but it's just teed into the rear and then the pipe is run along. But it does the job. Tyres are the original Goodyear's from factory. The fronts are 600s. And the rears are fitted with a, a 710, which is quite wide, and a 70 wall, so you can deflate and inflate the tyre as needed for ground compaction. So you get a little bit more tread on a 70 wall tyre. And of course, it's fitted with a bar axle on the back for whip. Onto the rear then, just having a quick look. We have some fender switches for your hitch and PTO. Four electric spools, which is quite advanced for, for 2004 era. We have a adjustable flow rate and timers for these. And as you see, the front spool is fitted into the, the brown there. So a, a little bit of history about this machine then. It was the farm's main sort of spread a tractor and sort of light-ish, I say light duty is 190 horsepower, it's pretty intensive duties. The other tractor they had was a, a 70 series, so that did all the big pulling, big drilling jobs. Huh? And then when the 70 series was out and about pulling the old big cultivator, this would go on the drill as well. There you go. So nowadays, this tractor has a bit of an easier life. It's been replaced by something a bit more newer, but it still does a bit of grain cart. It'll do a lot of mowing. It's, it still has a good place on the farm. The farmer's reluctant to get rid of it because it is an absolute gem at 3,000 hours. So looking under the bonnet then, you can see there's, there's no emissions or anything like AdBlue or DPS or anything like that. I actually quite miss working on these tractors because it was so easy to work on them everything's accessible you can see everything nowadays all this space here has something in it to do with emissions or electrics or modules or something it's just really really difficult to work on newer things now how this turbo works then in regards to getting more horsepower i won't go into too much detail but basically as more horsepower is required valves change things happen air pressures change the turbo has to work harder which means more horsepower essentially So then a quick look inside. This TM is a power shift, a power command model. So we have our sort of gear stick on the right here and we have pretty much a tortoise and a hare. So you wanna go faster, you tap the hare. You wanna go slower, you tap the tortoise. So a power shift then, a power command model. We have 19 gears and that is forward and reverse. On the joystick then, along with the gear change buttons, we have a hitch control, which is programmable on the right hand side for your, your maximum height and lower height and all that sort of thing. We also have a headland management button. I'm not 100% sure what that controls. If you guys let me know in the comments, but I think it does gears and hitch. I don't think it does any kind of hydraulic control spool wise. Staying with the right hand side then, we have our four wheel drive and diff lock controls. We have all our light controls. And then these are your, your draft controls and your hitch height controls, maximum height, lower height, all that sort of thing, which in turn programs to the hitch button there. We have our main hitch control here with another up and down hitch button. At the very back then, we have our PTO selection between 1000 and 540. Okay. On the centre dash then, we have some useful information. We have engine oil pressure, fuel level, coolant level. We have battery, hours engine speed you can have pto speed there set and then obviously your area and area hour slips for headland management on the left hand side of the joystick we also have our hand throttle very nice <laughs> so 
So what's going on here is we're about to calibrate the transmission, but we can't do that until the gearbox oil is hot. So I've plugged a jump lead in now with a restrictor on it, which will cycle the oil round, and I've put the restrictor on about halfway so we can warm the oil right up. The oil needs to be at operating temperature so the transmission is calibrated correctly to the average use of the machine. This warming up process usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes to get it to about 50, 60 degrees. So that's been about 15 minutes then, let's go and check on the pipe. So that feels quite hot, so I think we'll have a go at calibrating that now. So that's the calibration all done and successfully completed. We had no error codes and the oil was just about right. So let's give it a little road test, make sure she's all happy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video of an absolute classic. This is one of my favourite tractors, which is all ready for the summer. So until next time guys, bye for now. Oh. Ben, do you want a t-shirt? You got one big enough for me, mate. This is extra large and it's tight. <laughs> That's what I mean. Extra large. I'm large, extra large as normal. Because I'm a f***ing beast. <laughs>